I don't have a formal presentation for calibrators, but since I mentioned calibrators, I am trying to explain to, especially for who doesn't have any experience <coughs> what a calibrator is. <coughs> and which are the problems with calibrators. Maybe with some, I don't intend to be particularly original on that topic. I actually hated the topic all my life, but uh, uh, the thing is that you have uh, one record of uh, measure things, let's say two over t over time, and we have a computed uh, out of some models, some of our models. Models here is mean in any general sense because we just saw before that we are we have cleaning model, interpol interpolator. Later on, we will see that we have a model based on ordinary uh, differential equations that have some results, and the parameters are those of the differential equation. So the com computer thing depends on the parameters of the models, whatever parameters means, actually, because it, I don't think. OK. This is a <coughs> an improvement to. Um, what, so what happens if we change the parameters? Uh, uh, here in the blue, you also you have the measure. I put a, some blurred blue there to see that actually measured it. It's not like model L usually think. It's not just an exact measure. Usually, it's also a model, also the measure thing. And so, the, and there is certainly an error in measurements that can be pretty wide. Then we have one parameter set, two parameter set, three parameter set, and uh, which is the good one? Visually, we can maybe say that the parameter, the good parameter set, is the light, the violet one. I don't know how to classify that uh, thing, but uh, uh, we need something to say which is the best. And uh, here we have a, a first problem. Uh, you judge the things, uh, you fi can find an objective method to decide which is the best. But obviously, the objective method is uh, not objective in say, per se. The procedure is objective, but the, the, the way you decide what is op the optimum is subjective. And prone also to biases. Uh, you can do this time, time of things by hands. You take uh, one set of parameters, and you do your run. You took another set of parameters. You, you do a second run. You do a third run. Then you get some idea of what is, is going on. You observe visually any of the, any of the thing. And then you can uh, depict the parameter space like the, the one and say, OK, with these parameters, I am in a certain point of the parameter space. and. Uh, I have a, a certain uh, estimation of how good is that parameter set. Uh, during my life, I did this by hand several times. So not thanks to the thanks to the fire. So I I, I, had a, I waste actually a lot of time <coughs> in my life on doing things. But uh, so you have a, a usually I say a cube of parameters because. Uh, for the parameters, at least you are able to say, uh, in principle, between which values those parameters has to be, even if they are they are not exactly uh, physical parameters. Uh, going to the to say which is good or which is not good, the paradigm of what is good or not good is a root mean square error. We have the observed values minus the forecasted values. So we take the square, we sum over all, all the time, and we make we make the square root. This root mean square is obviously a function of parameters because uh, the forecasted thing depends on parameter. And so we uh, what we try is uh, 
uh, is to minimize this. But we have two first problems, which is one, how can we spend all the space of parameters, the feasible space of parameters, the one that I depicted in the previous slide on the right. And uh, the second is, is uh, the root mean square a good estimator or not? Could we have other estimator? So uh, what we need is a strategy to spend the, the, all the parameter space. We not necessarily all the parameter space because uh, 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 the strategy should be uh, uh, smart enough to de try to detect uh, where there is, there is the uh, where there are the best parameters, meaning the, the parameter that according to a certain definition of quality, which is for instance the root mean square error. Uh, there is a certain part of the space of parameter where maybe the solution are con the, the best solution are concentrated. So we need a strategy there. Uh, root mean square error cannot be the best. Uh, uh, man, I mentioned before the Nash Sutcliffe uh, method and another method which is K KGE. There are uh, there is plenty of literature without the Goff method, but uh, you know everybody of us actually can build uh, is. Uh, uh, goodness of fit function, depending actually on uh, which is the, uh, the output you want to obtain. I am going to forecast the peak flows, flooding, then uh, I don't actually want to forecast the whole hydrogen. I want to be precise when I, I go the, the flooding. The, uh, am I uh, doing some simulation for knowing how much water I would have to utilize in summer? I would be, be probably interested in the, how, when I have medium or low quantities of water. So I can figure out how to weigh differently, for instance, the hydrograph, which is the measurement set. So our goodness of fit are all, should be biased also towards the user that I do. <coughs> if the model are not, in the assumption obviously that the model are not perfect, they are giving error, they are simplification of reality that have any, any sort. So we have a lot of, of possibility here. And the third question, obviously, but now you see also the, the, the answer in a sense, the third question is, should I really do by hands? I did sometimes in my life by hands. But this is a, 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 the thing that you have just to repeat, nothing especially uh, smart that computer does for us for better. So what is a calibrator? At the end, a calibrator is a strategy for uh, spanning the, the parameter space, a smart thing. A good set of golf or golfs, good of fit, a goodness of fit elements, and a robot that repeat the calculation automatically but for us. Hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of thousands of times. Under these things, obviously there is a, a huge amount of of, um, of literature, mostly because there is a strong bias in this literature, actually. Uh, is as nice literature to read, is smart literature to read, but they usually need to be fast when they do their simulation because they have to do a lot of simulation. So usually the, their models are not so good. So the, there is a further problem which is here. When you have a real model that does real things, that does be, uh, better thing how to calibrate a good model, not a, how to calibrate a, a toy model of the reality. In fact, even the best calibrator cannot change a bad model into a good model of, uh, or a reasonable model, even if 
uh, we as engineers, uh, we yeah, look at the result and yeah, we want to have something operational work done. So we have to take care of having a good model which has a good structure that reflects maybe the physics of the processes uh, at, at the level to the, the respect that we want to the result that we need to obtain. And then obviously a calibrator helps a lot. And doing some uh, uh, arguing about calibration is important. We have also some generalization about calibrators. One is, for instance, we have two measures. Let's say we have two quantities. For instance, we, we, want, we have a model that gives us in, at the same time discharge and the bubble <coughs> transpiration. And we are so lucky that we have measured of both discharge and the bubble transpiration. And we want to fit our model in order to give the best results in the two cases. So here I have, I, I go to the multi calibration. Multi calibration actually is the, at the end of the same topic that, have, that are having two different goodness of fit because you say, I said before, okay, uh, good news per error is not enough. We find another goodness of fit, we take into account of some other aspect. Can we try to optimize two different things? This is much more uh, evident in other sciences, like I mean, maybe economics, where you optimize with respect to sometimes contrasting objectives, and you try to you try to find a trade-off between the two. Okay, so you have a multi-objective calibration or multi-calibration. Yeah, I call it multi-calibration, but multi-objective calibration can be obtain both because we have good different goodness of fit or both because we have several measurement to, 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 to go to get to get along. If we have multiple objective we uh, dig in a, in a sea of troubles because uh, uh, you know uh, estimation in uh, uh, you have objective one and objective two, for instance, here to do simply the things. And uh, we are producing points and uh, our, uh, obviously, our perfect world will be to have objectives maybe zero here. The objective function is going to be zero in this case, uh, in the case of these two objective function. But we are not going to go there. We are obtaining different optimization and in particular we are obtaining a sort of a curve <coughs> frontier which is called Pareto curve or Pareto curve but Pareto was Italian so uh, mat Italian mat uh, mathematician and in this Pareto uh, front we have all the, uh, the optimal solution sometimes are uh, op optimal for, for both so our choice would, would be sorry then I clean it. You know, the optimal solution more or less stays here, which is, a, again, the best trade-off between objective one and um, objective two. The one we have on this side are, are good for uh, maybe for objective two, because we are going to zero from uh, objective two, but we are not, we are far from zero for objective one. Uh, sorry, the contrary, actually the contrary, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you get the concept. So we have to deal with this solution. If we have three parameters, we have Pareto surfaces. If we have four parameters, we have Pareto hyper surfaces, so that things it, it became even more complicated. Uh, that's okay, but we can uh, assume uh, I wrote that, that a quick uh, idea I wrote on uh, uh, so We discuss later. No, uh, distance, equidial distance or Manhattan distance. Yes. Which is the norm, uh, uh, and you transform the multi-dimensional uh, and multi-coordinate in only one. And uh, yes, in, but all, not always this is possible. No, it's always possible. But it's not always meaningful. Okay, that's okay. Another very good question is 
so essentially on the Pareto front, I have all the optimal solution, which are a combination of the parameters. Yes. How to choose on the Pareto front? Yeah. The best one. Yeah, the best one is the one that I, I went there and on the chair to sign is the one that it is a, a compromise between objective one and objective two. But and somehow it's my arbitrary choice. The it weight. It depends on your application. The given yeah. the weight of the how yeah. balance. But that is the full history of statistics. Uh, you, a statistics is a procedure where sometimes you put subjectivity in. But the machine that is very bad. But then you do you uh, envision a, a rigorous method for doing it, a, a repeatable method. But at a certain moment, you have to decide. You, you have to decide which is the best for well, you. Well, it depends. If objective one, objective one is more. Which is the most important for me? Yes. At that moment. The, the, the one, really, the one that is the, the most trade-off is the one in between the two <coughs> blue lines that I draw. Is that there is a region where all of those parameters, more or less, are good because they are going to. But in, uh, if uh, your, your curve is an unfairable, so it's just, uh, you assume in a negative distance, your optimal point is uh, on the bicep, uh, on the bicep. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, geometrically, yes. <coughs> but practically, because of even the objective functions are not objective, objective. Are objective in the application, but they're not, are, are they are not objective in the choice. Because when I choose an objective function, I choose a, uh, uh, the, the name objective it is not is not correct. I choose a function to measure the optimality. Uh, uh, the procedure is objective, but uh, when I choose the function, the function has, has a bias towards some solution instead of the other solutions. Uh, which is uh, should I? Uh, uh, give benefits to the average of you, should I uh, give benefits to the, the tallest of you, <coughs> should I give benefits to the smallest, to the highest, to the, the those that, that, that has red hairs or those that which have uh, gray hairs like me. Uh, uh, I choose if my objective function is to to give uh, to give things to the gray hair ga guys, I chase an objective function to optimize, <laughs> but is subjective. At the end, there is always a, a, this type of choices that, unless we have other way to decide which is desirable. But this is a one problem. I mean, don't, I don't claiming that I am solving anything. I am just trying to illustrate the problem. So. The other thing is that uh, we usually have many measurements that span in space. So we have a measure, the three points are gauge stations on uh, our river networks. We measure discharge there, we measure, uh, we have some measure of wind, for instance, or vapor transpiration there. And we want to calibrate in different uh, parts of the basis. So uh, we, when we have this, uh, this thing, we, ha uh, we uh, talk about multi-site calibration. So what we want to do in general is multi-site, multi-objective calibration to come out. So we have uh, those machines that I showed before has to be, can be grow much more complicated to, to be expected to those choices. In particular, doing multi-site calibration is made simpler if we can do uh, our uh, separated uh, our territory in part. Maybe in particular of discharges, we, since we are talking about uh, hydrology here, if we can separate the basin uphill of the first gauge station, we can calibrate that and then keep, <coughs> fix the parameter there. The can, then we can come down, calibrate the other parameters, keeping fixes, fixing the first parameter and then going down again and calibrating again in this way. Doing the thing in this way uh, can be interesting and is possible with our system. So we can do also 
multi-site, mm. multi-objective validation. And that is what, what I want to, to say about cali the calibration method, but uh, which is the, the best calibration method that we don't know. Marco will tell us with, uh, with his uh, PhD if he likes the subject. There is a plenty of literature uh, about the data. Certainly, it depends on also on the type of problem we have. Mm, then, just a comment, there is a, the third step, which is spatial distributed calibration, let's say. Yeah, multi said yes. Yeah, let's say, I think, if I think, for example, to calibrate a distributed model against a distributed satellite image, in which you have a lot of pixels, yeah. I know that in the literature there is a lot of development, but so far no fixed procedure which is efficient enough. Yeah. Lot That's of debate. Uh, yeah, obviously it is a, a correct that uh, there is literature in that. I am uh, happy that there are people that want to invest in that uh, direction because it is necessary. But I might like to do, I mostly like to do better models and better calibration methods. So I finish here. Yeah.